Today, we're gonna talk about file settings. Your file settings menu is where you can assign folders to your browser, where you might keep plugins and things like that you wanna drop in. You can assign quick access for exterior software and all kinds of stuff. Please like the video. Let's take a look. To get there, we're going to go Options, File Settings. Starting at the top, we have Autosave. Autosave is going to be for your backups. If I go here to the left, matter of fact, we're gonna be in here a bit, so I will undo the auto hide. We have a backup section, and this is where these are going to save to. This maximum sets the number of these we can have in here, and this drop down sets how often or how frequently we get those uh, backups saving. So we can either set a reminder, we can set it just long enough that if our project crashes, we're gonna be extremely upset. We can set it occasionally where we might be upset, we might not be upset. We can set it regularly, which will keep you the least upset, and frequently every five minutes or before risky operations which will probably keep you the most not upset. So these risky operations is like opening plugins and things like that. Something to note before the regularly and frequently is regularly won't save while audio is playing. Frequently will do every five minutes whether audio is playing or not. Next, we have our manage plugins button, which is going to open our plugin manager. This is where we can scan for plugins, add them to our favorites, put them in categories, all kinds of stuff like that. You can also access this page by going add, more plugins, manage plugins, or same thing in the mixer, select more plugins, manage plugins. Fun fact, if you wanna organize your stuff like this, I got dynamics, emulations, EQ, suites, all that kind of stuff. You could do that in here by clicking something, going plug in and clicking favorite to add it to the list and giving it a category, which that category equals our dynamics or our EQ. However, doing it this way is kind of a pain in the butt and very difficult. So pro tip, go to your plugin database by clicking here, close all this. Effects is gonna be everything that shows up in your mixer. Generators is going to be everything that you can add as an instrument. As soon as you star or favorite these, they will be added into this list. And all you do is go open. And after you click open, you can come in here to these folders and move them around wherever you want. Rename the folders, drag the plugins you want in there. It is way easier to do than trying to do it through that plugin manager. And any changes you make will be reflected in here. FX Suites all the same ones as FX Suites, which is the same ones as FX Suites. Sick, moving on, we got user data folder. And this is where FL Studio will keep all your data. This is where it will save backups. This is where it'll put your plugin database, presets, everything. This is something you do not want to move from the default unless you're like me. And why would you be like me? Well, FL Studio or ImageLine warns against using OneDrive, Cloud, external drives, or anything like that to save these folders and files to. Reason being is some of these folders and files are required for working in FL Studio with your projects. And things like OneDrive and Cloud can actually end up locking FL Studio out from accessing those files amongst disconnecting or a million other problems that you could potentially run into that could have you fairly upset. My trusty laptop here for some reason decided everything that I ever load onto it has to go to OneDrive because they want to give me issues, I guess. So if you're going to change this user data folder, you're going to want to copy everything from this folder location to your new folder location. But note that doing this can be a freaking pain. If you do it manually, highlight all the folders and files. Make sure you right-click 
drag. That way you can click copy here instead of move here. Now, for some reason, when I did this, it wouldn't move the files or copy the files over. So I had to actually back out of the entire image line folder and move the whole image line folder. But when I tell you I ran into issues, I was having to delete things that didn't copy over right, bring stuff back out of the trash can. It was, it was ridiculous. It was a nightmare. I have no idea why. It should have been as simple as copy here. Pain in the butt. Cool thing, don't be like me. If you change this folder, FL Studio will actually copy everything over for you. You go, okay, and you choose your new folder location, and you click Select Folder, you'll get a little pop-up that'll offer to copy it over for you. Now, note, in order to copy it over, you want to make sure the folder that it's going to be moving everything over to is completely empty. Now, I've only ever had to change this the once that I had the most issue with. So I haven't actually had FL Studio copy the data over for me, but I would trust that a lot more than whatever I personally went through. <laughs> so now that we're done talking about that, we will move on to some of the cool stuff. If you have a folder, or create a folder where you wanna keep all your samples and keep them organized, you can add them over here to the left by clicking here and choosing the folder you want to add. As you can see here, I've got splice and splice forward slash samples. And if we go down here, I've got splice folder. You can name it. Got a little browser name here. I can name it Batman if I wanted to. <laughs> and we've also got my samples folder here. Splice samples, samples. Easy peasy, add it, adds over here. Something else to note about this section here is if you're missing samples, this section actually gets scanned for all of the samples that are used in the project. So if you put your C drive in here, it'll take forever to scan your C drive, but this thing will find your samples. And once it finds your samples, all you got to do is drag your sample into the browser and it'll show you exactly where that sample is. So if you did your C drive, it'd be C drive, user, blah, 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 all the way until you got your sample. Then you can just take your C drive out and put in the folder where that sample lives. Now under here, we've got something cool. We've got external tools. So all you do is you would browse for an executable file like your FL Studio startup file, for example, something like that. And you can put those here and they actually get added to our external tools section here under our tools. So for me, I've got splice. If I need to get a new sample or something I don't have, instead of having to go to, you know, exit out of here and open it up any other way, I can just click splice. If I have to do a repair to some audio, I can go tools. I can just click RX7. Easy peasy. Just add it right there. So we've got over here, we can assign these to the programs. We've got launch with path. FL Studio says that is for when you access a path from within FL Studio. Don't really know what that means, but when that path is accessed, it says it launches this tool. So if you have more information on that, please key me and everybody else in. Now, launch with file, on the other hand, if I click that and right click, we'll see I have external tools and that'll allow me to launch the file with this. We can also make a default audio editor. So if I go here and I go to, where is it at? Edit an audio editor, it'll open it up in RX7 instead of in Edison, which is the default for FL Studio. And then we have launch it startup, which will, well, always start it when we start up the program. We also have our script editor here. And not much is talked about for this in the FL Studio manual at all. I've always kind of wondered what this is. It does, however, say Python in the top left. And MIDI scripts in FL Studio use Python. So from my understanding, it has something to do with that. Just using context clues. I could be completely wrong, but 
Don't worry about that because you probably won't need it. And if you do need it, you probably already know what it is. Next, we have troubleshooting. Troubleshooting, we've got set to current. And this is actually for the plugin versions of FL Studio. So if you're using FL Studio as a plugin set to current, you would use to set it to a file path here. Um, I believe it's the file path you're actually accessing the project from in order to make sure that it's referencing files correctly. I've never actually used this though, so practical application, I'm not sure, but based off of that, if you have any use for it, hopefully you can experiment with it and find out the practical use. And although we had a couple little mysteries, who doesn't like mysteries? I don't really like mysteries or surprises. That is pretty much it. So in summary, we can control our auto saves and backups. We've got plugin managers in the data folder where FL Studio stores everything. We've got our browser file folders where we can add samples to the browser, or we can have FL Studio search for project files. Perfectly great for in the case of missing project files. We've got our external tools, a script editor section, and a troubleshooting section, which are a little bit mysterious. I hope this helps. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios. Mm -hmm.